G'day guys. Damo here, last cast fishing adventures. Just out off uh, Flinders Island, getting a few stripy trumpeter. You'll, uh, you'll see in this tutorial video how we make these traces. They're pretty strong. Not everyone's cup of tea, but uh, hopefully you'll see this fish when it comes up. Hey guys, welcome to Last Cast Fishing Adventures. You're probably wondering why I'm not out fishing. Um, well, the weather out there is pretty crazy at the moment. East coast is roaring with about 20 knots of southerly. Um, the northwest up here where I live is um, pretty dopey at the moment too. So I thought why not take the time to show you guys how we make our stripey rigs. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for this for a while and um, I thought it was about time we got onto it. So with this trace, we run 200 pound mono. Uh, you guys probably think that's a bit of overkill for a stripey rig, but um, we like to use these as backup for our um, blue eye traveller, gem fish, stuff like that. So we sort of have it as an all rounder. Um, but before we get to the mono, I better show you guys how we set these up. Now, um, not everyone's cup of tea. You might think, oh, if a Mako grabs onto it, you'd rather be bit off, but uh, well, you know, if you're a chance of getting into the boat, why not? Um, and you can see why that swivel works so well, like it just suspends out off that really well. Fish comes up, bang, he's just straight on it. You're not running the risk of it hanging down around your line, preventing the fish from sort of getting the bite. Um, so yeah, I'll show you how to make those. So this stainless wire, I've cut that to 550 mil. All you need to do now is sort of bend that in half, bring it down there, like that, grab yourself a hook, slide it on. Now you're just gonna simply grab the top of the swivel and a little part of your wire, and you're gonna just make a couple of twists. This doesn't have to be neat, just has to hold it on like that and prevent it from sliding and getting in the way later on. Now all you want to do is just straighten the two tags together, like that. And this is where you need your screwdriver. You can see we've cut the flathead off that. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, I like to get the hook and just wedge it in under the table. Try and get it to grab onto something, preferably timber so that you're not blunting the tip of your hook. And then all we're gonna do is come about halfway up and start wrapping that around your screwdriver. Now you want one to go clockwise and the other one anti-clockwise, just for that extra strength. Once you get that started around there, you can actually take out your um, screwdriver and put it around the other way and that does make it a little bit easier when wrapping. So just around and around we go. You can sort of just squash it up a little bit. You sort of see, you keep it fairly neat. Don't worry about that tag, we can take care of that later. And then we'll just turn that around so that we're working our preferred way. And then we'll just go the other way with the second tag. Bit of a fiddly job, but um, the end result does pay off. There we go, so we've got those both to that point. And now all you need to do is just grab your pliers and roll that around. It's not very hard. When you try to source this um, stainless, try and find the soft stuff. It does come in softer. Uh, stainless. The last lot we got was from Tamar Marine, but that was a long time ago. I couldn't even tell you what poundage this stuff is, but we've um, we've never broken one.
take your time with this step. Just make sure you get this part of it right because it's um, it is pretty vital that you do. You don't want any sharp pokey outy bits on that when you've uh, when you've got a big one on because sometimes the line does get tangled around these. And we'll just give that another tap just to get it all sort of scrunched in there nice and tight. And now all you need is just, you can grab a second screwdriver or something that you've got laying around and you just put that in there where your hook is and you'll just start to twist, making sure you go the right way. You don't want to go undoing it. Have done that. You're not even blonde. And then you'll end up with it looking like that. Nice and tight. Now, just a little thing we've added over the years to our rigs is a bit of heat shrink. And um, you'll see on these ones here, we've just covered those strands up because we've had big tangles and the braids going in and around and it's just hectic to get it undone. Especially when the bite's hot, you don't wanna be wasting time untangling your line. You wanna be sort of getting down there and getting into them. And so, to do this part, it's pretty straightforward. Grab your scissors, grab your heat shrink. You just give them a rough measure. Yeah. Like so. Grab your ignition switch. Make sure you cover right to the main beam there. Just hold it in place while you get it started. And just, yeah, I'm sure you've used heat shrink before. Be good stuff. It's not a huge deal, but I like to run two bits on mine just to make sure that uh, those tangles aren't gonna happen. is that so I like to run three hooks on my rigs um, simply because I just don't think I can handle four stripe on the one rig to be honest um, they go pretty hard they're pretty awesome fish and uh, I think three hooks is plenty here comes the mono I've measured this out to about 1700 um, again that can be whatever you want Personally, I don't like them too long. There's nothing worse than getting the first fish over and then you've got to go back for a double take and try and get the other fish in and, you know, losing a fish of the boat is the worst thing I reckon can happen to a bloke, so. <laughs> so let's get it going. Another little trick too that I like. I've actually used a bit of permanent marker and I've marked every 400 down from where my swivel's gonna attach, so. Just helps you in the process. Another little trick you can uh, learn with the lighter when putting traces together. This this even works for um, tuna traces and all stuff, all sorts of stuff like that. Put a bit of a mushroom on the end that you got the tag you're going to pull through, and uh, I'll show you what that does. So you sort of work, meld up a nice big mushroom. If you just flat there on the lighter. That goes cold. You can see the mushroom there. And um, that's actually pretty strong. You can't pull that back through, so. Yeah, no, got that right, so. It's just a bit of security. You don't have to do it. But it's what I like to do. You don't have to be too fancy with this end. We're, um, that's just where we put our breakaway sinker, so. Just keep that pretty simple. 
the reason we use a breakaway sinker is just like I said earlier, we um we like to use these as a backup trace when we're um catching traveller and gemfish and stuff and um when you get snagged up in that deep water, a lot of the time it's your sinker's got wedged up between two rocks. So it's um I'd rather bust off a sinker than a you know, sixty dollar trace. Now the next part's pretty simple. I'm just gonna run. Crimp down, then a bead. Then a hook. Another bead. And then another crimp. Hopefully my eyes are good enough to see where I've marked the uh, mono. Yep. So this part's pretty straightforward. You just wanna hold your hook where you've marked or wherever you want your hook to go. And um, so I know it's gonna be around right about there. So that's where I'm gonna start the first crimp. You don't have to crimp these too hard. This is just to hold the bead and the hook in place. down and crimp those. Simple as that, it just holds. You can see why we like to run it like that. With the weight of the sinker, it just holds those out really well. Don't get tangled up. Even if there's a bit of slack, it still holds them really well. So that's the whole idea of it. And then just repeat that step twice more. Most of this stuff you can obviously get from your tackle store. And if they haven't got it, they'll get it in for you. You don't have to go over the top of these crimps, just enough so that they'll uh, won't slide up and down your trace. Like that. You can give them a bit of a pull, make sure they're not going to move. You don't want to over tighten them, that's for sure. And now for the swivel. This is a pretty straightforward step, really. Just grab yourself a crimp. like to make sure the swivel ends are nice and strong just to stop any of that chafe uh, so we just any sort of pack of crimps is going to come with these line protectors so we run those through as well and again we'll do our little lighter trick just to give us a bit of security nice big mushroom Reasonably tight, then add one of these in. A little bit fiddly, but once you get there in the end, it's all good. Yeah, pull that up nice and tight. Off. 
And there you have probably one of the strongest stripy rigs you'll find out there today. Simple as that. If you have enjoyed this video and want to see more of my fishing adventures and tutorials, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you think this video might help one of your mates, why not share it with them? Stay tuned for more last cast fishing adventures and always remember, one last cast.